in, we welcome you, we welcome those of you who are online, and trust that as we worship God today, he will indeed meet with us and our hearts will be richly uh, blessed. Thanks for choosing to worship with us here at Boulevard, and we can assure you that God will pour out his spirit in and on us. Can we just bow our hearts together as we prepare to start? Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for keeping us, Lord, and for having bring us, brought us safely into your house. We commit ourselves into your hands. And we pray, Lord, that even as we start our worship today, that you will be in the midst of all that we do. Be with our worship team. Be with our, 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 our president, O oh God, as we today emphasize the youths, O oh God, in action. We pray your blessings on them. And not just on them, but on all of us. And may our time spent in your presence be a meaningful one. We commit the service into your care. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, we welcome you to the sanctuary and we trust that you will be rich and blessed as we worship the Lord. Madam President. All right, good morning once again, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, much, much better. As Reverend Gray had so rightly said, it is second Sunday, and as such, the Nazarene Youth International are in charge of the service this morning. And we have a special theme for you this morning. We'll be worshiping under the theme, From Straying to Obeying, Finding Our Way Back to God. From Straying to Obeying, Find out, finding our way back to God. Coming right off the heels of our week-long fast, we are indeed going to be refocusing our lives, recommitting our lives, and coming back to the Lord this morning. We'll have the opening song, which is He Knew Me. Can we all stand this morning as we do the opening song? which will be followed by the opening prayer by Brother Brandon Ramsey. Let us all stand for the opening song. Was on the cross when he was on. 
mind. Yes, yes. What a wonderful, mighty, and amazing God we serve. No matter what it is that we have done, as a matter of fact, he knew all that we would have done. And that is why when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He knew exactly why he went, what we would have done. So there is no sin that you are committed that is too big. He already knew it before he went to give his life for you. And for that, we are eternally, eternally grateful to our Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us reflect on that as he asked Brother Brandon Ramsey to come this morning to do the opening prayer. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Brother Brandon. Morning, everybody. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this brand new day. Thank you for life. Thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. Thank you that we can walk, talk, hear, smell, and see. It is indeed a brand new day to be in your presence once again, Lord. As we go through today's service, Lord, I pray that whatever, whatever things that may be on our minds, whatever problems that we may have, we leave them at the altar, leave them at the door. And we come into your house and we worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And we just relax ourselves in your presence, Lord. You know, we've, some of us have had a long week. Some of us have had a different, everybody has had a different week. But I pray that we come into your house and we just relax. And bask in your presence and have a good time in your house, Heavenly Father. We come in your presence and we just worship you, Lord. Cover the ones who are on their way and cover the ones on the stream as well, Heavenly Father. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Brandon. You may be seated. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have the announcements by Sister Orlet Ramsey. Please pay attention. I'm sure you have your notebooks, your pen, and your paper for you to jot down the events that pertain to you. Sister Ramsey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Right, I will just share the announcements with you at this time. Right, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. is our converts class. And you see who the conveners are there on the board. Sunday schools is also at 9 a.m. Wednesday at 10 a.m. is prayer and fasting in the sanctuary. At 6.30 is our prayer meeting. And our prayer meeting this Wednesday will be conducted by Sister Jennifer Trout. It starts at 6.30. 7.30 will be 7 o'clock, 7.30, one about that time will be our Bible study. And we're looking at the second, second Samuel chapter 14 from verse 1 through to verse 33. And our presenter will be Sister Kerry Ann Bramwell. Every Friday night at 6.30 is our NYI service. And that is why today is dedicated towards our youth. Our youth are in charge. This is our second Sunday of every month. Our youth is in charge. And so we're inviting our youth to come out to our Friday night NYI service every Friday night at 6.30. We are appealing, we are encouraging all the youths in the house it's a Friday night. You're not going anywhere Saturday. You're not going anywhere Sunday. So we're encouraging you to come out to see what, our, what is taking place in our youth service every Friday night at 6.30. On May 6th, we have tickets for a pre-Congress -con pre concert that will be held in Jamaica. And the price for the ticket is $2,000. And it's towards our, as it says, a Congress that's gonna be held sometime in July in Trinidad. And so we have tickets for that concert. It will be held on May 4, Saturday, May 4 at 6 p.m. The cost for the tickets are $2,000 and to be held at the Richmond Park Church. You can get tickets from me or you can get tickets from the NYI president. We encourage each person to make a contribution towards this, towards this Youth Congress that will be taking place in July. You'll hear more details on it as the day approaches. The God's Drum, we continue to ask for donations and contributions towards our God's Drum, be cash or kind, and you can give your donations to any member of the NMI Council. Mm -hmm. Our prayer breakfast is coming up. The tickets are here. The tickets have already been distributed. For those who have not yet gotten a ticket, you can get a ticket from the Women's Fellowship President, Sister Barbara Hamilton, or... Hamilton Morris, or you can get tickets from any of the members of the Women's Fellowship. The tickets are $2,500. It starts at 8 a.m. on Saturday, April 27th. And you are encouraged, members, you are encouraged to at least take one ticket. So each person should be able to to have at least one ticket in their possession, one ticket for themselves, and they should be able to take tickets that they can sell to others, right? Because we need the contribution, we need the support, we need you to come as well, when you just need you to take the ticket and nobody come, right? We need you to come as well, and for those who you're selling the tickets to, encourage them to come as well. Amen? Amen. This is a community effort. 
that we're putting on this prayer breakfast. As you can see, the menu is there, and you can come out and be a part of this prayer breakfast to be held on Saturday, April 27th at 8 a.m. in the morning. We have persons in our midst who have lost loved ones over the past week. I know Sister Roshane lost her cousin. She's not here today. She has gone to lay that cousin to rest. Remember her in your prayers. Sister Mandy also lost a cousin. She heard last week while she was in church that her cousin died from a freak accident at work. Please remember her in your prayers. And also Sister Audia Thompson. I don't see Audia here this morning as yet, but she lost her father during the course of this week. Let us just pray them up because we know that our God is able. Our God is able to take us through anything. And as we know that it is a, it is a, it is a crisis in person's lives when their loved ones have passed away. Not true. Yes, they feel the pain, they feel the hurt, they feel the grief, they feel the loss because their loved one is no longer here. So we ask asking you to pray them up. Pray for them. Pray not only for them, but pray also for their families. All right? So those are the announcements. Let us just bear them in mind and just pray up as we go through the rest of this week. All right, I have, did we have the... All right. Yesterday was Brother Oshane's time for his, his what, groom shower, right? <laughs> bachelor's party, right. They had a bachelor's party for Oshane yesterday. And I would just like to read what he says in response to, to that. He says he just wants to express thanks on behalf for the get-together put on by the Men's Fellowship last night. I received great advice and encouragement, so I just really want to let them know that I'm very grateful and appreciative of that, right? He says, even though we're unable to invite everyone to the, to the wedding, there'll be a Zoom link for the ceremony and to be sent out to the various groups, all right? So he just wants to, to let us know that he appreciates this. He just wants to say thanks to all of those who came out and participated gave their advice, gave their encouragement, and he just want to say thanks on behalf of himself and on behalf of Janine as well. Them taking on big people things, you know, so them need advice and encouragement. And so we were able to do that for them. And we just want to let them know that they have our support, they have our encouragement, and they have our prayers. Prayers, you have to pray for them and keep them under the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Those are the announcements. Thank you, Sister Ramsey, for the announcements. Just one more. A white Camry with the number plate 3423. I believe you're blocking someone. If you're able to move at this time, that would be greatly appreciated. A white Camry with the number plate 3423. You'll have to move your vehicle at this time. But now let us all stand to our feet. Let us rise to the occasion. It is time for praise and worship. As Brandon had said in his prayer, we may have had a rough weeks, but now is the time for us to give our Lord the praise that he's so duly deserving of. I'll invite the praise and worship team to come at this time to lead us during this session. Praise him. Good morning, everyone. As Sister Candace said, it is time for us to get into our worship segment. The theme for today is from straying to obeying, finding our way back to who? God. All right, whenever sounds certain. 
From strength to obeying, finding our way back to who? God. God. That's the one person you want in your corner, right? Because when God, well, it's not when God is on your, when you are on God's team, he has never lost a, never lost a battle. So we need to remain close to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Redeemed when my burden of sin was high. Redeemed when my soul condemned to die. Redeemed for the price I Redeem 
think of the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. It says redeemed when my soul condemned to die. My God, people can write you off. People can say all manner of things about you. But my God has redeemed us. My God has redeemed us. When I listen to the words of those songs. <laughs> say somebody write up a paper, condemn you to die. But God. But there is a God. Who says... You have been redeemed. My God. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all the Eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart. Lift your hands and say, There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search, I could search for all eternity, Lord.
God is concerned about his people. God knows everything. We're thinking, every thought, every emotion. He's the one to have in your corner. It's not to run away from him. It's to run to him. To run to God. To hold fast to God. Especially in these times, to hold fast to King Jesus. And call out to him. There is only one name. There is only one name with the power to say. With the power to say. Say there is only one day, there is only one
God doesn't need help. He's champion all by himself. He's God all by himself. There's none beside him. There's none before him. He's God all by himself. Come on, worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. He's God all by himself. Says, mighty God, I bless your name. Holy one, I worship you. For you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Says age to age, you're still the same. And all creation will shout your name. For you are God all by yourself. You don't need no help. You are God all by yourself. Come on, say mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. I bless your name, holy one, holy one. I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Says age to age, you're still the same. All creation will shout your name, for you are God all by yourself. He doesn't need any help. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. For you are God. Shout your name, for you are God all by yourself.
worship you for you are God all by yourself hey you are God all by yourself ain't you wait ain't you wait you'll see and all creation will shout your name for you are God all by yourself hey he doesn't need any hand you are God all by yourself
worship God. Worship Him for your deliverance. Worship Him for your victory. Worship Him for your healing. Worship. 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 Worship.
the glory of the Lord is in this temple. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are God of Whatever you have been praying about, believe God. Believe Him, victory is yours. Today, 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 today. Hallelujah. 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 He's releasing his healing. He's releasing miracles. He's releasing you from that bondage. Hallelujah. You hey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you have been praying to God about. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord is going to fix everything for you if you believe him. And you worship him and you trust him. Let go and let God have his way. Release. 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 Receive from God. Says you do not receive because you don't ask. Ask now, ask and receive of Him today, not tomorrow. Today, glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to pray and ask God whatever it is. You need from God now. Ask and receive of him. Hallelujah. 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 Open up your mouth and begin to talk to God. Ask of God. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Glory to God. He is God all by himself. And a man you talk to, a God you talk to, every blockage that the enemy put up, it come down in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, deliverance in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's God all by himself. And he's working out all things for your good. Although it might seem complicated. Although it might seem as if it is a mess. And you don't understand. He's working it out for your good. All things must work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. Jesus, hallelujah. God is present. God is hearing your prayers. God has heard your prayers. And he has answered. Hallelujah. 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 He said you must ask him. So open your mouth and ask him today. Today. Ask and receive of him. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, whatever you ask from the Lord, young lady, the Lord is ready to deliver, he's ready to give it to you. Whatever you come to receive from him today, receive in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Aleluya, 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 aleluya. Come on, you don't receive because you don't ask. So ask and receive of him today. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just going to give thanks. Because God has already heard the cry before we call. He will answer. And while we are yet speaking, he's listening. So him know. Him don't know a long time. And him send the answer already. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord. We raise a hallelujah to you, Lord. And we are thanking you, Lord, for what you have delivered today. Thank you, God. You have heard the cry of every single person. Every single one who is on the different social media. Those who are online. Lord, they have opened up their mouths. And they have asked of you. And God, they are receiving now. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for stopping the bleeding in Sister Wilson's brother's stomach now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the miracle. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for raising his blood count. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Dr. Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for the miracle, mighty God. Because your daughter has believed and he, she's believing for her brother. And mighty God, you have done the work. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you everything, Lord. Mighty God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you have done for us. For all that you have been doing. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way, mighty God, mighty God, have your way, have your way, Lord, fresh anointing, it's not business as usual, fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. All the young people, them come stand up, line up, line up, line up. Young people, line up, line up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fresh anointing in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Everything must break. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we believe that God has delivered. Glory to God. We pray and we believe that the work has been done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name, Jesus. It's not uh, about us. Uh, it's about you, Lord. Everything about you, Lord. Fresh anointing in this place. Uh, mighty God, do your work. Holy Spirit, uh, do your work. Uh, do your work. Do your work. Do your work. Do your work. Backsliders come back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way. Stubborn children come under subjection. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, have your 
way. Have your way. Jesus, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Break through. Break through. Break through. Break through. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me anoint these on the altar. Let me anoint them on the altar. Let me anoint them on the altar. It is you, Lord. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Hey! Jesus! Wet them up in your Holy Spirit, Lord. Wet them up in the Holy Ghost. Wet them up. It's not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit, Lord. Oh, Jesus. In the name of 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 Jesus. Mighty God. We look to you, Jesus. We look to you. Begin to pray. Be young people begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray. Hey. Let the Lord have his way in your heart and your life today. Today, 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 today. Oh, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, says, whatsoever you ask him in faith believing, he will give it unto you in the name of Jesus. Uh, ask him for the filling of the Holy Spirit. In filling of the Holy Spirit, uh, ask him to fill you up. You want new wine. You want new wine. You want fresh wine in your vessel in the name of Jesus. Oh, head knowledge can't do it. Intellect can't do it. A Holy Spirit have it with in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, submit yourself to God and he will lift you up. Submit to him. Ask God to remove pride. You're pompous. You're fraudful. Ask God to remove the pride from out of your heart. And bow down. Bow down. Bow down before God. Bow. In the name of Jesus. Every unruly spirit. Every disobedient spirit. Every spirit. Almighty God. Spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Every stubborn spirit. In the name of Jesus. We are root you out today. We are root you out today. We are set fire to you. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Have your way. Have your way Lord. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Hey, 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 Jesus, 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 mighty God, Jesus, we cover, we cover every single one of every member of the young people's group, all our young people, all our children, we are covered them up with the blood. The enemy shall not have them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The showdown was on Calvary. The showdown was at the cross. And Jesus has won the battle in the name of Jesus. So we already have the victory in the name of Jesus. All the wild dreams uh, that you have been having in the name of Jesus. Uh, hey, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray. The word of God says in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, or young men shall see vision. Or old men shall dream dreams. Uh, or young maidens shall prophesy in the name of Jesus. Uh, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 
everyone how no come under subjection. We no going walk holy. We no going live holy. We no going talk right. We no going live right. In the name of Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of the Living God. In the name of Jesus, and our self walk, and our self talk, a Holy Ghost talk, a Holy Spirit talk. In the name of Jesus, mighty God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, mighty God. In this vessel, in the name of Jesus, you shall not walk contrary. You shall walk according to the will of God. You shall walk uprightly. In the name of Jesus, you are different. Don't settle for Little, little and nothing oh for less than in the name of Jesus God has called you to come up higher in the name of Jesus be obedient be obedient be obedient be obedient I want all the men them all the men children go back to your seat and all the men come line up. Come on. All the men. Come on. Mean business for God this morning. All the men, where are you there? Come on, come up. Forward on yourself in the name of Jesus. God is depending on you men in the name of Jesus to stand up and lead by example. Lead your family. Lead in the workplace. Lead wherever you are. Adam, where are thou? Oh, no, nine already. Oh, you get nineteen already. You get in the name of Jesus. You get already. You get already. Yeah. Me nine to know already. Rise up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and stand up in your position. Stand up from head come down. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you. Come on. You get 19 and 19 already. In the name of Jesus. We are called, you know, in our own position. We are positioned, you know, in our own rightful place. Because God is depending on you in the name of Jesus. God is depending on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hear me and I'm ready. Hear me and I'm ready. Come, brother Morris. Come. You know, stand up. Stand up. Men of God, I call you because you are strong in the name of Jesus. I want must lead, 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 lead in the name of Jesus. Stand up in our position, rise up in the name of Jesus and stand in your position and do that which God has called you to do in your home, in your workplace, wherever you are. You must stand out in the name of Jesus because God is depending on you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we cover them with your blood. We cover them, God. Mighty God, and those who are not here, you know where they are now in the name of Jesus. We are putting them under the blood. 
blood coverage in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, they will be rise up and they will be doing that which you want them to do. Nobody will have to ask them to do anything, Lord, because your Holy Spirit is going to work within them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless them now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit. And Father God, we say they are to go forth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You may go back to your seat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please sing that chorus again. He knew me. Yet he loved me. He knew me. Yet he loved me. He whose glory I'm so unworthy of such mercy when he was all an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. At this time we'll have a testimony from Sister Marcia Bennett, which will be followed by the scripture reading, which is taken from James chapter 1, 
verses 19 to 25, and it'll be read by Brother Tajay Lindo. Now we'll have the testimony, my sister Marcia Bennett. Good morning, church. <laughs> well, hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, God, God showed for me last Monday. Last Monday, I was, me and my daughter, two little twins, drive to go to Alpha Tree. Well, she was the driver. So she, the, the devil is that. But wait, she's a purpose, so no devil of hell can touch her, because she's purpose. Man, we got off a tree, we come and we stop at the boulevard, but them stop at the boulevard, and me come out, and them stop on the sidewalk. We come, we come back, and them drive, go in, road. But when we reached, Mr. Bennett wasn't there. We leave, Mr. Bennett wasn't there. But when we reach, we open the gate, but we never see him park in the driveway. So we couldn't get to go in the yard. So now we park. The first twin take out some of the things them and run out of the yard. So she had the driver, so she had waiting me to take out the rest. We lock the car now. When we look, we see a white car. Me see the white car. They never see it come and stop right side of the vehicle. So me start focus now on what's going on. So when me look, me see a gentleman come out. So me said, in my mind, God, this is a testimony. So let me see him come out now. He stand up. But she stand up at the side. Me and go see him step past me. She did have a phone in her hand and her purse. So he step past me and grab she. Me say, God just said. Me say, God just said, strength and no fear. When he grab she, he put it in the car. Me wall up and out. Me I tell you. Father, God, give me this strength. Me ball for mercy, murder. She had them a lift up her for putting her in the car. And me wall on. And me wall on. She would be there right now. And me wall on. Father, God, say wall on. Me give you strength. Mercy, no fear. And me wall And when that was for them in the car. And when time him see me a wall on me. Nah, let go because it's strength. The Father, I know me can't get it back. When get the wall, she... And when me look, me see her next one come out and just touch the next one. The way me grab she, me all a drop. 13 pa 18 past three. Then come for a kidney nipper. But God, and she's a purpose. Purpose. I just want everybody to help me say, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Can you win the battle? Thank you. Orithia, you need to pay attention. God has delivered you. You need to surrender your life to the Lord. God allow things to happen so that you can see yourself. See that God is calling you. Come to God. Come to him. Surrender your life to him. Before it is too late. We've been saying it all day. What an awesome, mighty, merciful God we serve. Sometimes as... Pastor Cosset so rightly said, we go through things. And we, when we look back and think about what it is that God had stopped from happening to us. Yes. 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 Testimonies on top of testimonies of things that didn't happen. That would have surely taken us out before we'd have reached to see this morning. What a merciful God we serve. 
some of us have been running like Jonah. And you wouldn't stop till the whale swallow you. You wouldn't stop. But God is so merciful that even when we are going through our trials, just like Jonah, at the end you'll reach exactly where God wanted you to be. Let us stop running. As the theme says this morning, from straying to obeying, it is time for you to find your way back to God. Amen. Now is the time. Tomorrow is promised to no one at all. Now is the time to do so. Just would like to say welcome to all of those here in the sanctuary. This morning, yes, it's still morning. Welcome to everyone here. Here we have a visitor, a Diana, a lady Diana is here this morning. Welcome, welcome, Diana. Do we have any other visitors, first time visitors in the house of the Lord this morning? All right, I see you over there, young lady. All right, so Lady Diane, could you stand once more? And the young lady, let us all give them our usual welcome. All right, let's show that we love and appreciate you, and we'd love for you to come again. You'll get sugar nowhere else but the Boulevard Church of the Nazarene. At this time, let us stand for the scripture reading, which will be taken from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 25, and will be read by Brother Tajay Lindo. Again, the scripture reading is taken from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 25. Good morning, everyone. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart part all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls but be he the words of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was, 25th and last. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man sh shall be blessed in his deed. This is a portion of God's holy word. Thank you, Brother Taji. All right, let us bow our heads close our eyes we're going to be giving back to the lord a portion of what he has blessed us with as we show so rightly should do i'll be blessing the morning's tithes and offering after which the ushers will come and wait upon you as you give most righteous and eternal father lord this is the day that you have made and we so gladly rejoice heavenly father in it Lord, as we are going to give back to you what you have blessed us with, Lord God, let us give with cheerful hearts, Heavenly Father. Let us give, Lord God, knowing that it will go to the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord God, multiply it, Heavenly Father. Let it do what you will for it to do, Lord God. Bless us as we give, Heavenly Father, that we can give even more another time. Thank you once again for today and for this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For those joining us online, your instructions for giving will be on the screen. At this time, I'd like to invite the praise and worship team to return to sing some choruses as we collect the morning's tithes and offerings. One way Jesus is alright 
He's got the power over day and night. He's got the power over death and the grave. One way Jesus is all right. One way Jesus is all right. He's got the power over day and night. He's got the power over death and the grave. One way Jesus is all right. One way Jesus is all right. He's got the power over day and night. He's got the power over death and the grave. One way Jesus is all right. One way Jesus is all right. He's got the power over day and night. He's got the power over death and the grave. One way Jesus is all right. It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have His hand to hold, as long as He watches over my soul, as long as I'm under His control, it is all right. It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have His hand to hold, as long as He watches over my soul, as long as I'm under. Daniel's God surely will deliver. Sure, we all have a testimony for how the Lord has delivered us. At this time, we'll be blessed with a special by Sister Carrie Ann Bramwell. Just would like to ask for us to make her welcome as she comes. Sister Carrie. Following Sister Carrie Ann's special will be the word by none other than our very own Sister Khadija Leachman. You can make your way up and just hand over to Sister Carrie for this morning's special. Good morning, everyone. 
morning, church. It's indeed a blessing this morning to be in the house of the Lord. I'll try my best to do this special, but when I think of the goodness of God, as the song said, he is God all by himself. And uh, we embarked on a seven-day fast starting last week, Sunday. When we fast, it breaks us. When we fast, it humbles us to a point that no matter what is said, how it is said, your response is different. And I started out well Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. The enemy tried. And he always uses the closest person to you. And when that person opened his mouth and he made a comment towards me, I looked at him and I said, you must be disappointed because I'm not going to argue with you this morning. And I knew that the presence of God was within me because normally my mouth not have no filter. And then I lift my hands and I, I, when I drove off, I said, God, thank you for breaking and molding me and continue to mold me because I still have a far way to go, but I'm not where I used to be. And I can lift my hands this morning and say, thank you, Jesus. When praise and worship was being sung this morning, tears flowed. And it's tears of joy because of where I'm coming from. So this morning, if you're afraid to fast, don't be afraid. It can be a bit intimidated when you hear the hours. But let me tell you, see when you start and your mind is set on Christ, no food not entice you. None whatsoever. And this morning I can stand here and I can say thank you, Jesus. And I hope this special will bless your heart. My throat is not a hundred, but I'll give my best. Bless the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Some folks will rather have houses in land. And some folks choose treasures and forget about their soul. Oh, yeah, but these things, I won't let them hinder me, no, from serving my God, cause I have deep to make Jesus my choice I said some folks hallelujah some folks will rather have houses and land and some folks choose treasure and forget about their soul oh yeah but these things i won't let them hinder me no from serving my god because i have decided to make jesus my choice yes my choice you know the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb i've started out oh a long time ago and i've made up i've made up my mind yes with jesus strong arms where no tempest can harm yes i'm safe and secure i've decided to make jesus my choice yes my 
my choice These clothes I am wearing May be tattered, tattered and torn Yes, and these shoes I am wearing Might be battered, oh, battered and worn Yeah, but these things, hallelujah Let them hinder me No, from serving my God, cause I have decided to make Jesus, Jesus my choice, oh yes my choice, you know the road is rough, and the going gets tough, and the hills are so hard to climb. What's your choice this morning? The road gets rough. The going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. But this girl started a long time ago. And I have made up my mind. No pick me, no husband, no work, no friend. Now I'm going to turn my mind from God. With Jesus' strong hands. We're tempest can harm I am safe and secure what is your decision today are you following Christ do you just want the blessing and not the blesser because many of us sitting here this morning we just want breakthrough but we don't want to go through the, through the, through the process hard to climb Oh, I started out Oh, a long time ago Yes, I made up I have made up my mind oh, With Jesus' strong arms Where no tempest can harm Yes, I'm safe and secure Cause I what me I have decided if I have money or not I have decided to make Jesus my choice yeah
Hallelujah. Indeed. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Indeed, the Lord is in this place. Amen. You know, while we were in praise and worship and, uh, you know, while we were singing, you know, and when the musicians stopped playing and we were just hearing our voices blending, it's like I could just see a vision of us in heaven, just singing and giving praise to God. And uh, you, I, I could just feel it that the things that we were struggling with, the Lord was breaking the chains. He was breaking the bondages. And I pray that we all believe this morning that indeed our bondages are broken. Our chains were free from our chains this morning. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. As the theme says this morning, from strain to obeying, finding our way back to God. Sorry. All right. Falling away from God is more common than you think and can come in all shapes and forms. It don't necessarily have to be someone who publicly renounces the Bible or someone who in very obvious ways lives in the secular world. It can be as subtle as someone who appears right with God from the outside world, but in reality, whose hearts have deviated so far from the cross. But if we are being honest, the most subtle of the two is the scariest. Today I am here to speak to both the saved and the unsaved because we have all fallen in the past or are still in a fallen state from Christ. Before we start, let us just pray. Most heavenly and righteous Father, Lord, we just lift you up even right now, mighty God. We come to you, Father God, and we come just saying thanks, mighty God. Thank you for everything that you have already done. Thank you for what you are about to do in this moment right now, Father God. I pray, Lord, that even as I speak, right to God, your words right now, Lord, that it will not be me speaking, but it will be your Holy Spirit, mighty God, who will tell me what to say, Father God, Lord Jesus. I pray even right now, mighty God, Lord Jesus, that you just open the hearts of your people, mighty God, Lord. We pray that any heart that is hardened this morning, mighty God, Lord Jesus, that it will soften, mighty God, and your words will pierce through the rocks, mighty God, that are hard in your people's heart this morning. Mighty God, I pray over myself, even right now, mighty God, as I share your word. Mighty God, just touch my mouth. Mighty God, touch my voice, touch my throat. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I believe, mighty God, what I am asking you for, and I know you will do it. In your wonderful and precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to stray away from God? When you look up the de definition of strain, it means to move away aimlessly, aimlessly from a group or from the right course or place, to wander off or get separated or get lost. So in essence, it is saying that when we stray away from God, what we are doing is moving away aimlessly from a group, from God. We're moving from the right course which God has set for us. Right? Another definition says that when you're unfaithful to a spouse or a partner. So in straying away from God, what we're doing is being unfaithful to God. Because he calls us the bride of Christ Jesus. And to obey, it means to submit to the authority of someone or comply with a law. To carry out a command or instruction. So in obeying God, we need to submit to the authority of God and comply with his law. Today, I'll just be using Psalms 32 as my guide as I go along and, you know, in how we can find our way back to God. And I'll just be going through six steps to help us in finding our way back to God. So the first one is that we have to acknowledge our sin, right? Acknowledge our sin. In acknowledging our sin, it calls for us to be humble and get rid of pride, right? Here, in order for you to acknowledge your sin, you have to accept or admit the existence or the truth of something. 
As human beings, we are all aware that unless we acknowledge our sin, unless something seems, you know, unless we stop and think to ourselves, you know, all right, let me look within myself and see if what I am doing is pleasing to God. Right? In Psalm 32, 5, it said, Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. Right? So indeed, we have to acknowledge our sin to Christ Jesus. Right? And uh, as I say, I'm here to speak to both the believers and the unbelievers. Right? We know many times to us, you know, if something to us makes sense to us and we say to ourselves that, listen, I don't think that this is a sin. Right? So I am going to continue doing it. But scripture teaches us that, listen, we need to be humble. Humble ourselves and turn to God and say, Lord, you know, um, to me this doesn't seem like a sin. But let me know if this is a sin indeed. Because, um, you know, even the simple thing as the Bible reminds us that, um, you know, one person eats meat, right? So honor God and another person abstain from it in honoring God. You who eat meat might say to somebody who eat meat that, who don't eat meat, say, well, Father God, I'm not busy, I'm not going to sit down, I'm going to eat meat in front of them, right? Because me feel like say, me for eat meat. But the Lord would say to us that, listen, if you know that somebody doesn't eat meat and you're around them and it's like you're eating meat around them and like you're trying to pest, be a pest to them, that is a sin. Even though to us, you know, we don't really see the danger that we're doing, you know, right? But we have to look within ourselves and, it, and indeed acknowledge this sin. And as I say, we cannot lean on our own understanding, right? We have to lean to Christ Jesus and say, Father God, I am coming to you as a humble servant today, right? There are things within me that, you know, it doesn't seem like sin, but just show me, expose these things, right? If we're doing something to us and it doesn't seem like we're doing anything wrong, we will always be stuck at that place of not acknowledging sin as sin. We have to kill self here. The Bible tells us you need to deny yourself and take up the cross and follow Christ Jesus, right? Um, as I say, you know, um, yeah, that reminds you, know, the first thing we should remember is that our thoughts are not God's thoughts. It is very important that we acknowledge our sins as believers and non-believers. Sometimes acknowledging our sins means only acknowledging it to Christ. And when I say that, I mean it in the sense that Let's speak on the, on the side of an unbeliever. When you now decide that, all right, you know what? I am going to acknowledge my sin before Christ. Remember that you're somebody who used to be a part of the world. And you are used to being in company of persons who are also in the world. When you decide that you're going to stop and say, boy, you know, I'm going to look within myself and say, me they commit that sin here. It's like the people around you discourage you. You know, it's that they're starting that no man, you, you, you think Father God, I can forgive you for you do, right? And I love how, you know, scripture just reminds us and tells us, you know, when I, when I read and I realized how Christ died on the cross for us and he made a way for us as people of God to come directly to him. You know, he cut out this whole thing where we need to go to a priest and confess our sins. Because, you know, honestly, if many of us look into ourselves. If we were supposed to go to a priest and confess the sins that we commit, trust me, as a priest, you are there and a man come to you and say, boy, you know, I really want to change over my life, but last night I killed all 27 people. Trust me, because that priest is human, you know. That priest is going to find it hard in himself to say, you know what, let me go to God and atone for this person, right? Because when you think about it, Father God, somebody will really kill 27 people. They deserve to forgive, get forgiveness, right? And... Uh, Indeed, yes, we all, none of us is deserving of forgiveness. None of us is deserving of grace. But thank God that we no longer have a priest that we have to go through. Thank God that we no longer have to go to anyone and confess our sins. So, you know, sometimes you have to just go into your room, lock up, talk to Father God, and trust me, ju just acknowledge your sin before him, right? Um, you know, um, scripture also reminds us that you know, then Saul said to Samuel, in Samuel, you know, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I, would have, I was afraid of men, and so I gave in to them. As I was saying, sometimes we have to indeed acknowledge our sins to Christ alone. Because, you know, when we try to please man, right, when we're so caught up with what man, hear what Saul said? He said that he was afraid of the people, 
right? So, so he went and he burnt incense, something that was sinful, right? But he was saying to Samuel that, boy, I'm tell you, because of the people. Then. We have to understand as both believers and unbelievers that, listen, we cannot let anybody cause us to not acknowledge our sins before Christ Jesus, right? In, um, yes, let us also learn this, that sometimes God is going to point out something to us and say, this is a sin, and you might not understand how that is a sin. Listen, just be obedient to the Lord. If he says it is a sin, it is a sin. This is where total submission to God comes in, even when it doesn't make sense, right? And, um, you know, that's like, even when it don't make sense to us. And listen to this. Christ Jesus, everything that he tells us is not going to make sense to us. I remember somebody said the other day that if it is that you can understand God in, in his entirety, is he really God, right? Like, why should I serve you if everything that you do, I understand why you do it? We have to understand that sometimes God is going to give us certain commands. And listen, we, we just have to just go with it. This is where full trust comes into God. God is the one person that you can put your full trust in and he's not going to fail you, right? He's not going to tell you something today and then tomorrow he'll say, oh, Jesus, I'm mean, so sorry, I never take in consideration. Yesterday I never took this into consideration. I was giving you this promise. No, the word said, the word of God said that his promises are yes and amen. Amen means full stop. That's why it stop, right? Nothing comes after it. Whatever I say, that is it. All right. And... Uh, the second one is uncovering our sin. It is important that after acknowledging our sin, that we uncover all our sins. Because if we don't, I assure you, the Lord will find out. Right? There is nothing. The Bible says that there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed. Nothing concealed that will not be made known or brought out in the open. Right? So indeed, we have to indeed uncover our sins. You know, the Bible says, you know, when we're approaching God's throne... We have to come with an intention to uncover everything. He already knows everything. Do not hide anything from God and say, Oh Lord, if only you knew that I did this. God knows, right? I remember when I was younger, I used to say, Boy, Father God, I wish that there were some things that you did just turn a blind eye to like, if we don't say it to you, you don't know that we do it. But guess what? I am glad that God is not like that. Because, you know, if it is that God had indeed decided to turn his eyes from certain things, when I go to confess my sin to him, I would be afraid to say it to him because I would feel like God is looking at me different. But because God sees and he knows everything that I have already done, it comes with ease for me to uncover my sins, right? And um, even as we uncover our sins, we have to remember this, right? Both believers and non-believers. Sometimes, you know, unbelievers might feel like, boy, yeah, sometimes they feel like they can't go to God, Right? You feel like it's only Christians alone have this privilege. But let me tell you, you too have this privilege. We were once, you know, we were once out there in the world as well. None of us were born into righteousness. The word of God said that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right? So even as unbelievers, trust me. You see, when you sit down and you genuinely uncover your sins to Christ Jesus, right? He sits and he listens because guess what? God wants to welcome us into his presence, right? God said that the enemy is about to take us out, right? Just like when he said to Peter that the enemy has asked to sift you out like wheat, but I have prayed for you. It's the same way the enemy is looking to sift out the unbelievers, the believers, right? And I'm telling the um, unbelievers, listen, man, it's when you sit down and you genuinely talk to God, ain't I need for God with no fancy words, Right? Sometimes we think so we need to know all of the scriptures in the Bible. That will come later on. Talk to God like how you talk to your friend. Sometimes I have to sit down in my room and I have to talk to Father God. I had to laugh. I saw a post the other day on Instagram. The man said that he was praying and he got so comfortable in prayer. He called Jesus babe. And I was laughing because I'm like, you know, Father God, that is just the, the relationship that we have with you. Mighty God, Lord Jesus, you know, is that we become so comfortable with you. We speak to you. Right? Talk, patwa, talk to God. God understand. Right? Sometimes I have to say, Father God, I don't understand what I'm going on, you know. But I tell him, I have trust in you because your word said this. Talk to God. Talk to God like when you talk to your regular friend. Him. Him not tell him, say, come on and, and come with your beautiful words. No. Be yourself. Right? And this is how we have to uncover our sins. Right? And as believers and unbelievers, the word of God. Many times when I'm 
I feel like a sin and I feel like God is just disappointed with me. And you know, I go and I start to pray and I, and like God said to me, said, no, my word says I'll come boldly before my throne with confidence because you know that you will obtain mercy and find grace in your time of need. So when you're going to God, not the enemy telling a lie, say, Father God, now why you come to him, talk bold and stand firm upon him word. You get me? Stand firm. And I say, even unbelievers, even if you don't know the word, I'm telling you today, when you go there, the Lord to come boldly before my throne with confidence. Go there and talk with confidence. So, Father God, despite the enemy, he are telling me that you're not going to listen to me. When you lie, I tell. The Bible said that he's the father of lies. The truth is not with him. He not know if he talk the truth. Right? So, we can't make the enemy come and tell. We say, oh, go in front of God. No, talk, talk, bold. Go boldly before God. And say, Lord, I acknowledge my sin and I uncover this sin. Because guess what? You see, when we do that, the enemy is shame. Right? The enemy is ashamed and he not have no foothold over us. Right? So we have to go boldly before the throne of God. Speak, speak with confidence. Believe. Go in there. Right? It's not that you're being presumptuous and saying that, oh, Lord, my sinner, I can't come to you. But you're, but you're being um, brave in knowing that, guess what? God is going to forgive me. Right? And it is also important that we make every opportunity to uncover all our sins so that the enemy, as I said, has no foothold over us. When we uncover all things, the enemy can't be in our ears saying, but you didn't tell Jesus about this. When, when you tell Jesus everything, the enemy, I go search and search and him cannot find anything, right? And, and as I, I said, you know, I always remember, and you're going to have, in uncovering your sins, you're going to always have negativity around you, right? But the other day I said to someone, I said, listen to me. You see, when I came to Christ, the Lord remind me and tell me that I have cast your iniquities in the depths of the sea. I said, first of all, if anybody know me, me can't swim. So me not swim, me not put on a scuba diving suit and go down the depths of the sea. Go look back for those things. If you want to do it, you go and go do it. Right? Yeah, you have, you have to know to tell people them something there. So if you want, because people, it's like, you know, they hear that you turn to Christ Jesus. They hear that you want to turn to Christ Jesus and they expect it to be the same. I remember somebody said to me, Khadija, I don't have a problem with you, you know, saying that you become a Christian, no, but it's like you just change, you know, your ways change. So what is the sense in me becoming a Christian? I cannot become a Christian and walk the same way, talk the same way, right? The, the word of God says that those of us who come into Christ, we cannot continue sinning, right? So, so indeed, you cannot be like that. So don't, don't worry about the naysayers. They're going to say that you change. They're going to say that, boy, you're supposed to change. You are supposed to change, right? It's just like what I said. I remember when a friend visited me. And they were saying, you know, they, they always talk about going to the beach. And I said, how come they never invite me when I go to the river? And they said, boy, Khadija, the type of um, vibes that we go to the river, we didn't know you can't manage it, you know? Right? And from I said, I know what they meant and thing. Right? And they were making joke and saying that when we have water baptism or crusade, we invite you. Right? And... I mean, I was walking inside, and I was kind of feeling discouraged, and I was like, why, Father God? Um, why am I just reaching a Christ where, like, you know, people are really inviting me out again, right? But God said, no, don't be ashamed of that. The fact that your, your friends are mindful of where they invite you to, it simply means that there is something reflecting in your life to say that I am no longer living that life, right? And, and indeed, it has to show within us, in a man. It is hard for us to come into Christ Jesus, and we don't change, you know? It is very hard because after a while, things just start bother you. Certain things just don't, 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 you know, grab your attention again, right? I always say one time that I want, I always wanted to know what it feel like to go to a soccer party. Somebody said to me that you can't still go now. I said, really, what am I going to do at a soccer party? The music, I'm not drawn to those type of music anymore. So I can't go to a soccer party to enjoy myself, right? So indeed, we have to uncover our sins. The third one is confessing your sins. You know, after acknowledging and uncovering our sins, we have to have a heart of repentance. Confession and repentance goes hand in hand, right? Um, you know, we know the popular saying, confession is good for the soul. Confessing and repenting comes hand in hand, right? Um, Leviticus 5 verse 5 says, when anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what way they have sinned, right? So when, when you stop and you realize that you're guilty in a matter, we need to stop and indeed confess our sins to Christ Jesus, right? We need to stop and look within ourselves and say, no man, Father God, man, mm -mm, something not seems right, right? 
it, it's just we have to think of our relationship with God as any regular relationship that we have with our husband, with our friends, with our family, right? The same way if we know that something hurts somebody, right? We're not going to do it. We need to think of our relationship with God just like that, right? I remember my friend, you know, as I started speaking about unbelievers, my friend, I was, you know, we were speaking the other day when we were going home and she was saying that, Khadija boy, people acknowledge God now, but they, them just no want to take on God fully, right? Them just want to call on God here and there and, you know, pick him up, put him down, right? And I was saying to her that as people, we are so selfish, right? We are so selfish and we like faith for do things to God that we don't want people to do to us, right? We want to use God, right? I know that many times, you know, when we say to the unbelievers that, um, you know, when you... You know, certain something happens in their life. The other day, we were speaking at work, and I think a co-worker said something about they met into a very terrible accident, right? And they were saying that they were giving God praise. I'm saying, I never feel like we give your life to God after that. And somebody will jump up and say, Uno Christian need for stop saying that. Stop using that for tell people to come to God. So I'm saying to the person that, listen to me. It's not that I'm saying to the person that must drive fear into you for come to Christ. What I'm saying is the fact that you can stop and look at your life. And so that you almost lose your life, right? And not once did it come to you to say, maybe I need to, to, to turn my life over to Christ Jesus. It's not force or forcing anybody because of fear, you know. You see, if, if, if the unbeliever does understand. You see, when you come into Christ Jesus, there is something different. Right now, I'm looking at the world. I may say, no man, Father God, I could never the same world as me. I grew up in an all along. Y your mind just gets so open to the spiritual. You start seeing the things that the Bible speak about. In the last days, people will have a form of godliness, but denying its power. People want to acknowledge God, but them don't want to want God. Right? We want to pick up God and put down God. And God don't work like that. Right? Sometimes as Christians, we have to tell people raw as it is. Sometimes we know, you know, we don't want to say, oh, we don't want to offend the believers, the unbelievers. But sometimes we have to tell people straight up, say, listen to me, no man. If you have to decide one day, say, choose God. Choose God. Right? I was saying to somebody, as um, the persons who don't really cause, you know, I, have, I know somebody. The person believes that if you don't believe in something, it can't affect you. And that is what the enemy tells people. If you don't believe in a, the devil, the devil can't attack you. If you don't believe in a hell, no, um, then you're not going to go to hell. But that is a lie. That is what the enemy keeps telling people. Right? Whether you want to believe in the enemy or not, the word of God um, is true. Right? They tell you that when you do certain things, right, the enemy will have certain foot all over you. Right? So, so we need to stop telling ourselves, you know, so, um, stop lying to ourselves. Right? And telling ourselves, but, oh, if I don't believe in this, then it won't affect me. I saw somebody said that the enemy, right, will allow somebody to live a life free of chaos as long as they don't find their way to Christ Jesus. And let me tell you what the enemy used to discourage people. You're out there and you're living in the world. And it seems like everything going good for you. But the minute you come into Christ Jesus, it seems like, why? Everything does seem like a wire. And then people get discouraged and say, I better me to just stay out in the world. But listen, Father God, tell us that trials and, and, and temptations and those things are going to come. But you know what? It is better for us to live a life of trials and temptation now, right? And later on live an eternal life with Christ Jesus than to be living in, in um, prosperity and living out there in the world now just for us to lose our soul, right? When, when we think about losing our soul, as I said to somebody, our minds are limited to this human world. We think that when the Bible tells us that um, people are going to go to hell for eternity, right? We know that when somebody comes and if they slap you, right? It's like that you feel the pain for a minute, but then it wears off. But when somebody that you trust comes and they betray you, it's like you feel something down in your soul and trust that hurt more than when somebody slap you. It's the same way when you go to hell, right? The fire are going to burn you. And your soul, you got tormented. When I think back on that story about Lazarus and that rich man, right? And the man said, Listen, my father Abraham, send somebody go tell my brother them, send a come at this place. I thought about it and I said, Father God, this man and him brother them, maybe not even they live good, right? But for sure, yeah, all, all the way hell stay. Him don't even wish this man anymore as enemy. The man said, go, go send somebody go tell my brother them, no come here, so, right? People here will speak about hell and they feel like it's a joke thing. And it's not that we're saying it to you for you to become fearful. We want you to um, come to Christ Jesus and come and know him for yourself. 
Right? We're not saying come to him just because you're afraid. We're saying come to Christ Jesus, know him for yourself, have that relationship with him. Okay, so when you have that relationship with God, man, trust me, man, sometimes you're dead and when you're supposed to, uh, a mad out, as the song say, I'm mad, me I'm mad out, right? But now in the name of Jesus, now I'm mad out, right? Mighty God, Lord Jesus, yeah, we have to, you know, we have this peace of mind, Father God, Lord. It know, makes sense to us, right? And indeed, I say, we have to confess our sins. Go to Christ Jesus. Say to him, Father God, I confess this sin to you, right? The enemy are going to try and discourage you, you know. But stand firm upon the word. Continue with the word of God. Continue with the word of God. Continue with the word of God. Not stop preaching the word of God. Right? And I, you know, as I say, um, in Leviticus 5, 17, it says, If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's command, even though they do not know it, they are guilty and will be held responsible. And it's the same way. That's why I say, we have to turn to God and say, Lord, show me the things within me that is not right. Because sometimes we do some things, right? And to us, it not seem like a sin. But the Lord said, even if you don't know it, right? It is a sin. And you will have to pay for it, right? So indeed, we have to confess our sins. Say, Lord Jesus, show me the things within me. That is not of you. The things that are killing you in me, kill it. Father God, Lord Jesus. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. As unbelievers, sometimes we have to confess our sins to each other. But listen, the Bible goes further. It says, pray one for another. So it's not just any and anybody you must confess your sins. To confess your sins to people that you know will pray for you. People that will mention in prayer and say, Lord, you know, say, Khadija tell me she has struggled with this. Um, you know, I'm praying for her. Right? Don't just confess your sins to any and anyone. And when we seek God's forgiveness... We indeed need to believe that we're indeed forgiven, right? We need to indeed believe that we're forgiven. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're not forgiven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. In, you know, the fourth thing is praying after confessing our sins. The Bible affirms the power of prayer to bring comfort, guidance, and even healing. However, it doesn't guarantee that God will answer every prayer in the way we desire. His will will ultimately take precedence, right? And let me tell you this. One thing I can assure you when you ask God to, conf um, to forgive you of your sins, he's going to forgive you. He's not going to sit down and spell and guess and say, should I really forgive her? The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He didn't say, if you confess your sins and I sit down and consult with my angels and you know and I ask the so Father God, if no, immediately he said, he will forgive us of our sins. And he goes even further of purifying us, something I didn't even ask her. Purify us of all unrighteousness, right? And indeed, you know, we, we have to remember, right? Sometimes as unbelievers, you know, they think to themselves that Jesus will not stop to pay attention to their prayer. And that he only hears Christian. But that is not true. That is not true. As I say, none of us were born into Christianity. We weren't all born Christians, right? We, none of us were born as Christians, right? So indeed, we were once at a place that you are at. You can stop and say to Father God, Lord, I, I, I am choosing to follow you. Let me tell you something. The, the, the word of God says that there is much rejoicing in heaven when one sinner comes. Can you imagine the party we are keeping in heaven when one away? One of the sinners come to Christ Jesus, right? We have to think on these things. The angels are rejoicing over you coming. You're coming into a family that, that, that the love just overflows, right? Um, um, Kumarka, could you please bring up Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 7, please? Isaiah 55, 6 to 7. All right, so it says, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to God and he will have mercy on them. 
and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Right? Here scripture, um, you know, commands the wicked to forsake his way and the unrighteous men his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. God will abundantly pardon. So we see that God, we see God extending an open arm to sinners. Right? We see where God is saying that, listen, forsake your wicked ways. Right? Turn to God, you know, and he will have mercy on you. He, he gives you reassurance that he will have mercy on you. And I'm speaking to even the backsliders as well, right? Those of us who may be losing faith. I'm speaking to us as well. Let us forsake our ways and our, um, un, the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Right? God gives us a heart to know him and maintain. Right? We have to pray also that God gives us a heart to continue to know him and continue to seek him. Paul reminds us that we need to fan into the flame of God in our lives. Sometimes we have to fan into the flame of God. And not every day I got to get up and, and, and feel um, like, you know, I want to choose God today. Sometimes I don't feel to pray. But let me tell you this. You see, whenever you don't feel to pray, that is the time when you need to pray. Right? No, no, many times when I don't feel to pray, I just start talking and some woman reach in and I want to pray and I don't know. I just say, Father God, I really don't feel like praying, but I'm still a sit down right there, so I'm still a talk to you. Make me know what I say, Father God, Lord Jesus, right? God, there, there means that there's something on the enemy that want you to pray, right? Because trust me, not prayer, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Sometimes we don't know what we pray at them are doing, you know? right? Sometimes we feel like we pray at them don't make no sense. Until when somebody come to me and say, boy, you know, said this was happening and, and you know, God came through for me, I don't even understand, right? So indeed, we have to ask God, you know, to give us a heart, a mind to know and maintain knowing him. The fifth one is follow Christ, right? In Psalms 8, 9, right? After praying, we all have to make the conscious decision of following Christ Jesus, right? We have to indeed um, follow Christ. For the unbelievers at this stage, you can make the first step, you know, in publicly declaring and being baptized, right? Don't overwhelm yourself for the Christian. If I get baptized, won't I fall into sin again? Every Christian can tell you, right? We will be baptized 5, 10, 15 years, and we still fall into sin, right? It is only Christ Jesus who is able to keep you from falling, right? Many persons, my, my, my friend said that she talked to a co-worker the other day, and he was saying to her that, why may I wait till me at 30 and second down and everything before I come to Christ Jesus? But I remember somebody said the other day that, listen, if you're 25 and you have up to 30 to live, um, you have lived long, sorry, you have a very short time, right? But if you are 50 and you have up to 100 to live, right? You have a very long time to live, right? One time we usually say, oh, it's just old people alone dying. Young people dying now. You can't even put one off and say, oh, old people alone dying. None of us know when our number will be called. So we can't be sitting here and saying that, oh, we're going to wait till we're 30. We're going to wait until we settle down. And let me tell you this. You cannot, you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to wait until, you know, I start out things with myself, until I make certain things right. Certain things you cannot do it on your own. You have to come to Christ Jesus. There are, there are some, some behavior, some things in us that is Christ himself alone. Have to, have to remove it from us, right? You can't do it, no matter how much you tell yourself. You cannot do it on your own. So we need to stop telling ourselves that, you know, when, when I set it down, when I have this, when I have that. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Can you imagine to have somebody who tell us to come and seek me? And the things them where you try to forget on your own. You come to me first and I just give them to you, right? I'm not saying to you that you're going to come into Christ Jesus and everything just going to be nice and dandy, you know. Because sometimes people think that when Christians speak, we're saying that your life, your life going to be nice and out there. No. Right? You're going to face some trials. Some days you're going to feel cast down. But one thing you can remember is that God is there with you. Right? He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. In 1 Thessalonians, it's... In first, oh, sorry. In Colossians 2, 6, 7, it said, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk with him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Right? We have to also study the word of God. It says that the word, your Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
We have to stay into the word of God to know how to follow him. Recent converts, don't overwhelm yourself trying to do everything on your own and, and what the scripture says, right? Sometimes you feel like because you're just coming across, you, you need to forget everything. You need to forget everything done right now. As I said, it, it, it is all stages, it is steps. It is steps, right? Steps, 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 steps. The other day I was thinking, I was saying, that, boy, Father God, when I um, gave up my life to you in 2020, right? Like, I feel like I could have just pray one little simple prayer, mighty God, and you hear me now. It feel like, you know, it's like me feel going to some deeper warfare, some deeper prayer, right? So, so you're not going to remain at the same place, right? When you start out, don't overwhelm yourself that, oh, Father God, I hear that person pray, and I wish I could pray like them. Sometimes you're a little five minutes prayer, do much more than what a one hour prayer is doing. Do, do, do not compare yourself to others and worry about that. Don't, you know, just be there and want to say to God, God, I want to follow you. God, I want to do what is right. He's going to help you, right? So, um, indeed, mighty God, Lord Jesus. You know, it is God who gives us the willpower to resist certain sin and give up certain lifestyle, right? We, we have to indeed just turn to God, follow God, right? Follow Christ Jesus in all that we're doing and even in saying that. Right? Um, I always think about it. Many times I hear persons say, oh, they don't want to go to church because they're a hypocrite there at church. And all these things. Hypocrite there at the workplace, but every day they're there, five days a week. Right? You get me? Um, and person might say, yeah, but at least the work is paying me. Yeah, but it's God who give you the work. It's God who give you the health to be able to do the work. Right? I remember one day a friend said to me, boy, yeah, my mother love church, COVID, and I still got church. Some say, but you there work every day. The person say, work up here. I say, God, give the strength for you come and work. It's God give you the work. So I have to go and give him um, praise. Right? If I am able to worship God, why not go and do it? Right? And as I said, they, they speak about hypocrites. And you also cannot. You cannot try and look at a Christian to live your life. I will tell you this. God will judge that Christian. You see, when that Christian calls you to falter, God will judge him. But at the same time, when God comes for his, for his world, you will not have an ex who say, Why? Father, God, I told me to say, Sister Khadija, do this now. I'm never like, what should I do? So I decide, I'm not come to you. You can't use that as an excuse. Right? And that's why I said, Do not look to people, look to God. Right? Even, even if you're looking at your pastors, are here to lead us. Right? I heard Pastor say the other day, if he says something up here, right? Go into the word of God and see if we him say line up with the word of God. Some of us, we, we just love, we, just, we don't want to read the word of God for ourselves. We just want one pastor to come and anything with them said to we will follow it. Right? I see somebody post on Facebook what they are. Oh, Christians um, collect offering. Right? But the word of God says that um, money is the root of all evil. I said, no, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. Right? So it is no problem in collecting offering. Right? But people just hear something. Right? And they just run with it. Right? And as I say, you, can't, you cannot look at a Christian. As I said, God will judge that Christian now. When them cause people to falter. But you will not have that as an excuse on the day of judgment. For say, Lord, I was watching this person, right? And because the person never do this, why am I never come to you? You cannot use it as an excuse. I am telling you, turn to God and say, Lord, help me. I know that you put these people here, mighty God, to set an example. But they're not really set an example. Show me, mighty God, the way that you want me to go, right? And even as, you know, even as Christians, we also have to be careful, as I speak about it and say that sometimes something does seem like a sin to us, right? But if it's going to cause our brother or sister to fall, right? Sometimes we're not a sinner because as I said, just eating meat, right? To eat meat is not a sin. But if you know someone don't eat meat, don't go around them. One co-worker tell me one time, our, our father is a die-hearted um, Rastafarian. And one day he went on the road and she and her sister take the man pot and go cook pork. And they never know him come back and I hear that the way the man come back and him get so upset. The man use him beer and I take the hot pot from our face stove and fling it over the gully. And then him give them a beating. Right? People might look at that and say, that, but that is foolish. But guess what? As I said, the Bible says to you, if somebody don't eat meat, don't sit around the people that might eat meat. The man don't eat pork. Why you cook pork not the man pot? Right? You get me? It's it not going to make sense to us, you know. Right? And as I say, as Christians, we have to indeed be careful. Even if we feel like, boy, Father God, this not make no sense, right? Many times we have this, as we saying, right? If we're told as women to, you know, just modestly, right? We say to ourselves, oh, Father God, these men must be able to control themselves, right? But no, if you're going to do it and cause your brother for sin, 
put, put aside the old thought for say, men must know how to control themselves. Just put it in your side, Father God, if you say enough to do this, they're enough to do it. Sometimes God for certain things to work for just take it and not question it. And a human being right out to we need to question what them say. Right? So as believers, we also have to be careful. Right? Because we can't take on judgment when Father God say. I put you here and you cause 300 people for fall because you did this and you did that or you feel like you were supposed to have your own way. The final one is rejoicing in God. Have you ever, have you ever wondered how the walls of Jericho came tumbling down? It was through the power of rejoicing. The Israelites marched around the city, blew their trumpets and shouted for joy. This captivating story reminds us that there is an immense strength in rejoicing in the Lord. In times of happiness and hardship, we can turn to the Bible to find encouragement and inspiration. Right? Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Right? We have to rejoice. So when you go through all of these five steps, and you know that the Lord has forgiven you and you're praying, rejoice that the Lord has heard you. Rejoice that the Lord has looked at you and decided that, okay, I'm going to welcome this child into my presence, right? Listen, yes, you see, to be welcomed by God, it's a beautiful feeling, right? It is a wonderful feeling. I was saying to Father God the other day, Lord, man, I like when I say, adopted will get adopted. But it's because my man was just thinking how the world think of adoption, right? It's like it's not really your, your child and thing. But listen, when you look on some of these persons when they adopt children, they wouldn't even know that the children were adopted. They treat them like their very own. So how much more, as the Bible says, if you know you are even know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give good gifts to you? So if the world know how to treat these adopted children as their very own, how much more when God calls us adopted children will he treat us as his very own? Right? We have to indeed rejoice in that. Right? We have to rejoice in trials and tribulation. You know, God has to remind me that, listen, when my word says, um, consider it pure joy, when you face trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith produces perseverance, right? And we must let perseverance finish its work, you know, so that we may become mature and complete, lacking nothing, right? God is saying to me that, listen, it's not that I am telling you to act like, say, whatever you're going through now hurt you. What I'm telling you is rejoicing about the end result, Right? I heard a friend said it to me the other day, right? She's not a Christian and, you know, it made me think and I said, Lord, boy, if the unbelievers can't stop and see this, mighty God, why me as a Christian could stop and think about it? She said that she was driving, right, up from Norbrook and she said she turned around the corner and um, into a sudden patrol and she end up going to somebody's wall. She said, the, the, the liquid she hear her vehicle get, she go, she go up there expecting to see the whole her vehicle front tear off. She expect to see the people them all mash up. But when she looked, it was just a punctured tire that she had. And, you know, she called the place and they come and assisted her. And she said, in that moment, you know, is that, she said, you know what I realized in that moment? Is that God was just saying to me that nothing bad lasts for long. Right? And I was saying, my God, if she can stop and look at some things in her life that despite that happened, she can stop and say nothing lasts for long. How much more should we as believers believe these things? Right? Believe the word of God. I have to be telling, Lord, renew my mind. Because it's like I am, I, I am easy to accept the things, when, the bad things that the Bible says will do, will happen when we fall in sin, right? But when it speaks about the goodness, when it says that, um, you know, no good thing will he withhold from them who walk are upright. I find it hard to believe those scriptures. And God is saying to me, no, you need to build the same way how you believe. Say, so when you do something bad, something's going to happen to you. Believe, say, so when my word say, when you walk upright, and I mean, no good thing will I withhold from you. Right? We have to remember this. Sometimes we have to encourage yourself, you know. Right? As much as sometimes, me tell them, man, you have to, what do you have said to myself? Say, listen, stand up in front of me and talk to you. Right? The same way how you encourage people and say to people, say, you tell them about the word of God. I'm going to talk to yourself the same way. And say, listen to me now, man. This is what the word of God says. You need to believe it. Right? Now, not make the enemy come and tell you no foolishness. If the word of God said it, it have to happen. Right? The word, God said that he honors his word above his name. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his words will remain the same. Right? We have to hold on the word of God in a man. Don't, don't, don't make the enemy come and tell you no foolishness, man. Right? A generous person will prosper. One who refreshes, other they themselves will be refreshed. The Bible says, You shall lend to many nations and borrow from none. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You have to speak over yourself, them some here. Right? Some of the enemy tell you, the Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you keep on a thing negative, 
not just negative, but you have to think positive. You have to think positive. Believe what the word of God say. Right? Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Even when I don't feel like God did it with you. That is when he's there with you. Right? So my time I say, Father God, may not feel like you're there with me. But your word say, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So even if I don't feel like it, you're there with me. Okay? See, if you're never there with me, the enemy, the enemy would have do like what you say. Him ask for to sift out Peter like wheat. He would have sift me out like wheat. So I know you're here with me. And the enemy cannot touch me. Right? So indeed, you know, as I say, rejoice. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, right? In Habakkuk 3, 17, 18, it says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stars. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will take joy. So, so what Abakuk is saying here that listen, even when it looks like say, everything wrong may not make sense, it looks like sorry. It look like everything is failing. I am trusting in the unfailing God. Right? Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Right? Our present suffering cannot um, um, be compared to the joy that will be revealed in us. Right? It's the other day, no matter I was thinking. Because one of my friends, she was there and she was saying to us, four of us, you know, we're Christians, and she was saying that, you know, what you think, each of us, um, we're, we're called to do. And she turned to me and she said, I don't know, Khadija, I kind of feel like you, be, you know, called to evangelize and thing. And I was like, uh, eh? Because, you know, it's here about evangelizing, you know, you have to move about and everything. And I'm like, you know, Lord, but you know that there are certain things that I want in this life. And I feel like, you know, if I evangelize, you know, I won't get it. But then immediately God brings a scripture to me to remind me that, listen, nobody who has left family, mother, father, you know, for my sake, will fail to receive a hundredfold. And he said, you know, just um, to reassure you, you know, because sometimes we hear these scriptures, I would think that God is talking about after him come back for the world. He said, in this life and the life to come. So he's saying to me that, Khadija, you will not fail to receive hundredfold in this present life that you're living and the life after that, right? Just in case you were thinking that, I was just talking about the life after that. May God bless you with things. If you leave your family and friends, right, to evangelize for me, right? So indeed, as I say, rejoice in the Lord, you know? Despite all things look around us, despite. We can't, the Bible said, do not focus on the things seen. Focus on what we know that God says. The other day, I was just becoming so discouraged. When I look at the world, I say, Lord, I, may I be honest with you, Lord, I don't feel the urge to encourage anybody to come to Christ. Right? But then, God, I remember, that, you remember that you were out there at one point and you were lost. And somebody had to share the gospel with you. It's the same way you have to share the gospel with people. Let me tell you, people are going, especially these times, when you go to people, they're not going to make you feel like you're an idiot. They don't want to hear what you say, but listen, it is better that at, the, at judgment day that it be said that, guess what, Khadija, you planted that seed. The person did not water it, right? Then for God to say, listen, they put it there for encourage a person, and you never do it, right? So, so indeed, you know, and, and I say, Lord, let me see people how you see them. Because if I see people how me see them, I'm not, going to want, I'm not going to want to encourage people. Mighty God, say, Lord, if I ask God, Lord, help us to indeed feed into people. Let us think about it. Mighty God, the same way how we needed a savior. Father God, these people need it, even the people who think they don't need God. We all need Jesus, right? You know, matter what them say, sometimes them, you know, the moment will be able to like, say, we said to them, no make no sense to them. But when them go on, the way you speak the word, the word appears them out, right? It is piercing their heart and eventually they come. And them said, boy, you know, one day one young lady, they come to me and she talked to me. A young man came to me. We have to encourage the unbelievers, right? Even in these days, people and people encourage each other. I used to wonder, and I said, Lord, I'm not understanding how people come in a Christ and they might fall away from you. What do you, I, I, I was there and some of you feel like me about to fall away from Christ. Like, I'm like, what is happening, right? And then I said, boy, Lord, no, no, I understand when I say in the last days, many will fall away from the faith. We have to continue to keep praying up, right? We have to tell Father God, help me. Find you, God, I want to do this by feelings. Because if you do it by feelings, you're going to fall away. Because you're going to feel like today, so God, no, they're there with you. And God is there with you, right? We can't, we can't live this Christian life based on feelings. God, not do this thing by feelings. Him do it by him word. We have, to, we have to stay in the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, ask God to explain it to you, right? 
And when you read the word, don't just read it from the surface. Okay, you read things from the surface, yeah, we don't understand. I tell people, I, I don't have conversation with people who just read the word from the surface and just leave it like that. Right? Plus the Bible says they have no argument about genealogies and the law. For it is unprofitable. Right? So I don't argue with people about all of those things. Right? I, if, if we're speaking, but we want to hear we want to make up on the same page about God. Right? Because sometimes when we look, as I say, when we think about all of these denominations that we have, if we just sit down and we ask each other, you know, what, what we learn about the Bible, we will realize that the only thing that is separating us is, is just these traditional things. Right? As I said to people, I, I am unbothered. By, if you are a Pentecostal and I wear a um, skirt, I am unbothered. If you and I are serving, are serving the same Jesus, me and you can sit down and talk. I am not going to tell you that, oh, you know, and I don't want you to sit down and tell me that, oh, don't wear your pants and thing. Right? Because of our tradition, the word of God has become of none effect in our life. We're so caught up with all of these things, the correct day for worship, what to eat, what not to eat. You get me? And it's, we just become so against each other. Right? I always say, thank God that the kingdom of God don't operate upon us. Because with a mash up God's kingdom, because a kingdom the world against itself will not stand. With a mash up of a God um, place, but thank God that the, um, heaven is not like that. Right? And indeed, you know, just pray. And you know, um, Jesus is not asking us to carve a path of new life on our own. He's out ahead, leading, instructing, teaching and counseling he will take us in the newness we long for all he asks is for us to stay near right we indeed have to rejoice in Christ and I pray today that you know indeed a, a unbeliever a believer you know somebody will indeed you know hear what I am saying and you know we, we will indeed take heed to the word of God as I say as an unbeliever no worry yourself. Don't miss a come to God, confess your sins. Eventually, you just say, you say God just will work things out for you. After God changed some things in me. Sometimes I say, Father God, then I went, may I sleep, you change this in me. But God don't have to wait until we're asleep. Standing right, you know, God can be changing something in me and I don't even know it. Don't worry about trying to be perfect. God will perfect you, right? God will help you in all that you're doing. And as I say, no worry about your coming to Christianity, say your fault, your other fault, your other sin. But guess what? Have a repentive heart and say, Lord, boy, forgive me. Right? Forgive me. I did this. You're not going to get it right the first time. You're not going to get it right. Right? But one day, eventually, you know, lying, all of those things, it just, it's like it grieves your spirit. You don't do it again. Right? So I just encourage us and I encourage us as believers as well. Right? Don't have us who feel like we're falling away from the faith. Just hold on to Christ Jesus. You need help? Call out. Call a brother. Call a sister. One of my friends was saying to me, she said, I was saying to her that sometimes I don't want to call nobody because I feel like, you know, I'm going to them. And she said, Khadija, you know, that might be pride. And I stopped and I thought about it and I said, you know, it could really be pride, you know. Right? Because to me, I wasn't thinking it was pride. But the father, you don't want to tell anybody what you're going through. Tell people what they here for prayer for each other. Right? And when the enemy sin, you know, one of us shall chase a thousand, two shall put ten thousand to flight. Eh? We suppose that the enemy a shake when him see it, man. As people of God, man, we have to know the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. Sometimes you go feel cast down, but me tell him, man, call upon Jesus, you know. Call upon Jesus, you now. One thing, my do I answer, and the Bible says, answer evil before we call. What, what a wonderful arm God to have. Even before we call him, answer. Even before we can think in our mind, Father God, I'm going to sort this out already for you. Right? But as I say, the Christian journey, you're going to fall down sometime. You're going to have trials, you're going to have tribulation. But guess what? It is all to build us up. We're all being built up in Christ Jesus. And I pray that, you know, this word today does bless somebody's heart. And I thank you. You know, bless your name. Shall we bless God? I continue to be very proud of this young lady who continues to exemplify the Christian walk and is growing con continually in the Lord. The Lord bless you, my sister. And I want to encourage all of us, as she says, 
Let us walk with God. And don't think you can do it all by yourself. We are susceptible to fall. We do not... Just listen to my word carefully. We have a tendency where we fall into sin. But we always have a choice. We have a choice. So therefore, it is safe to say we do not have to sin. But we often sin because of the human nature that is in us. Right? But remember, in the midst of all that, we have a choice. Choose you today whom you will serve. So it's a matter of us choosing to do what we intend to do. But the word is very solid. And the Lord bless you. Very proud of the young people that we have that continues to exemplify their Christian walk. And I want to commend them. Members of the Youth Council, can I ask you to stand? Members of the Youth Council. You never remember see about that council. <laughs> All right, there are those of those who are here and others are around. And we just want to pray for them continually. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may have your seats. Thank you very much for that word. We have one of the newest couple in the world in church today. The Henrys. Can I ask them to stand? <laughs> How old is your marriage, Mr. Henry? How, about how old is your marriage? Pardon me? About an hour. It's about an hour. Can we invite you to come down here a little bit? Mrs. Henry got baptized Good Friday. Her husband, he knows the way. A man who loves the Lord. Yes. I mean, I don't know why you fool your hand with a baby now, you know. You're a married man, man. I mean, you just see a little bit how married people do that is, you know. Yeah, we, we need to see persons do a little bit how married people do. Not true. Not true, church. The baby sleeping. So, we're going to ask you now, sir, to pull your hand with your wife. And your wife, pull her hand with you. Praise the Lord. And how long have you known each other? How long have you been together? So, for me, match did wrong. I may have said 20. And anyway, 17 plus years or so. So, in a synopsis, can you show us what 17 years have taught you? Without saying a word. Without saying a word. Come Sister Henry, come Sister Henry. Just, just so. Just so, Sister Henry. All right. I should say, I duck. Mr. Henry, just give to your wife a little bit of what you want to give her. Don't, res don't resist. Don't resist this, please. Yes, praise the Lord. We are so happy for you both. The blessings of the Lord be on you always. Amen.
youth Sunday is rich. Today is very rich. It's a very full Sunday. And we're not going to complain, you know. Sometimes we come to church and we say, boy, the time I run away from, we're not true. Because we have been here now for about three hours, about that, right? Ten o'clock until now, about one o'clock. Um, there is something that the youth department on the district is doing. They are trying to send a representative to Kenya. Now, they have sent some tickets to us, which would frighten anybody. I think the tickets cost $5,000. Right? For, um, what, what do you call it? Um, SIP? African SIP. And you see, African drink, men are so sure about that, you know, because they have a whole combination. We're not going to take the SIP, but we are going to give a contribution to the African SIP. Amen? Are you with me? How many tickets did they send to us? Sister Ramsey? Five tickets. And each ticket costs $5,000. And we're not asking you to buy a ticket for $5,000. We're asking you to give a contribution to sending these two representatives to Ghana. Whatever you can give. Whatever you can give. If you have it and you can give it today, we would welcome it. If you don't have it today and you can bring it next week, we will welcome it. Anybody have it with them today? If you have it with you today, raise your hand. So we say next week then. We will come prepared to take a contribution towards the African uh, missionaries next week, Sunday. Amen? Amen? Why me one can I say it, you know, and I preach it and I say amen to myself. We are seeking your support. Board members, we need to meet in our retreat. And the way how things are going, it's kind of difficult. It's sticky. All the days are taken so far. Saturday is Janine's wedding. The following Saturday is some district activity. Oh, spa breakfast. Right. And we need to meet as a board to put some things together as to how we are going to um, go through the year with the activities and so on to pray and to plan. Amen? We need to pray and to plan the activities for the various years. Already, the Sunday school have a list of activities that they have planned for Child's Month, which is in... And may start a few days from now. All right? And so we don't want it to happen. We don't want us to um, start meeting when some of the activities should have already been executed. So, is the Sunday school superintendent nearby? Sister Katie and I, are you here? Oh, she's upstairs. Okay. Let me tell you what we're going to do. Next week, Sunday, I will have her share some of the activities that are planned for May with us so that we can be praying for them and helping to uh, gear our activities towards fulfilling these plans. Amen? Hello? Amen. Yes, because there are some Sunday school drive there is inviting a friend and all those things and those are some of the activities that have been planned for the month of May. And so we want you to be very much a part of it, all right? Board members, I tell you what. Sister Ramsey, we're going to just put this in the loop. We're going to discuss it some more, put it in the loop, and ask the board members to respond, right? I know we have spent quite about three hours here already, and I don't want to stress you any longer. Amen. We're going to close and we're going to allow you to go. Can I ask you to stand with me, please? The Lord bless you. 
Yes, can we all sing? Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. to go we ask that your Holy Spirit and presence will go with us and before us guide our steps order our walk watch over us keep us safe protect us from harm and danger let your divine will be done in our hearts and in our lives thank you O God for the time that we have spent into your presence continue O God to enrich us and to revive us by your Holy Spirit we give you all the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name the song that you have just sung is a benediction. And so, just bless each other as you go. God bless you. Have a great day.